While XCOM 2's character pool is pretty neat, it could use some improvement, so I decided to make a utility to do just that. So currently, in XCOM 2, you know, you obviously you can create a character, you can base it on whoever you want, you can import other people's characters, and you can, you know, delete, export them to different pools, etc. But that's about the limit, right? Like, if you want to go further than that, it starts to get a little messy looking. So if you're a streamer, for example, and you enlist, I don't know, two, three, four, five hundred people to be part of your campaign, you have to go in one by one, as far as I know, and import each file by file by file, and I can't imagine how long that takes. So I've spent a long time making this utility to manipulate character pool files uh, to save basically some of that effort. It's a standalone app and I'll go ahead and go over what each piece of it can do. We'll start here, create a new pool. So this basically um, creates an empty character pool with, from which then you can add a new character, you can import other pool characters, you can edit existing characters once they come up in the list here, etc. So start with the basics, add a new character. It defaults a few things just to like the first selection in the list and from here you can edit its properties just like in the game if you were to create a new character you have your character info first last name nickname biography all that stuff is available in the character info tab then you have your head appearance tab and in there you can pick things like your skin color which is dependent upon the race that you've selected in character info hair color and these are all you know the same exact options that you get in the game in fact all these drop downs are the same options you get in the game eye color face props etc and I, I also went through the trouble of <laughs> I don't know if I should have done this good because some people like to use unrestricted customization but depending on what you pick certain other drop downs will disable enable and all that stuff so if you pick the Delta 1 helmet you can no longer pick hair and that is because, uh, if I can find it in here, there we go, uh, it covers your hair. So the game just doesn't let you do that. Things like that. Uh, then in the body appearance, you can customize all the other things that you can customize here. So your armor colors, you can customize what type of arms you have, your patterns, what type of torso, and keep in mind this is very early stages there's no visualizations here and I don't like that eventually I'd like to come up with some type of way to you know see what you're selecting because torso one doesn't tell me a lot in the game you can obviously just cycle through this stuff and see what it looks like you cannot do that in here yet we'll see how it goes tattoos tattoo colors so again anything you can customize here you can customize over here and of course your weapon appearance. Now you can also do things like reset and in this case it's not going to do much because when you add a new character there's nothing to reset so it's just not going to do anything. Um, you can delete characters which I guess I should put a confirmation in there but it does what it does. And then down here you have a couple buttons so this one lets you select one or more character pools uh, to merge into your current character list. So if I was to select uh, new cool pool and I don't know Developers, well, that's a bad example. There's a ton of stuff in there. Uh, maybe maybe test pool and uh, Open that we'll open those files It'll go ahead and automatically detect any selections of the, that those characters have That are DLCs or mods that I support in this case. There's quite a few I need to probably consolidate these dialog boxes, we'll get to that. And normally it'll also detect duplicate soldiers, but in this case there's some very, very minor difference between these two. I, well, there we go, upper face props. So I'm just going to delete one of them. Um, again, keep in mind these are test characters, so everything is a little bit weird looking. So here's something interesting. If you click the DLC mod availability button, it brings up this little dialog box. And from here, you can select what DLCs and mods that you want to show up in the option lists. 
And what I mean by that is... Well, let me start over. Not start over. Let me, let me clear this out and deselect everything here. Just to make it easier. Let's add a new character. We'll say his name is... Content Creator. Who goes by the name... Shall sell. Male, Caucasian, doesn't matter. All this stuff is just random. Preferred class. Uh, you know what? It's side topic here, but I don't actually know what this does. In the game, this is this. View a soldier class. I guess, I don't know if this is purely to view them, to see what they look like as this class, or if this is like, they when they up get upgraded in the campaign, they might actually become this. I don't know. But anyways, you can select it in the app. And, uh, of course, all the other options. But when you go down to this DLC mod availability button, let's say we have, I don't know, War of the Chosen and Shin's Last Gift. Supply that. Now you can select any options that come along with those DLCs and mods. In the case of War of the Chosen, we can make our soldier a Reaper, for example. And, of course, that disables certain other drop-downs. Updates the selections within the other ones. And, uh... For Shin's Last Gift, you know, you could be a Spark if you wanted to. And again, all of these are updated to be what they should be if, if you were to select them in the game. So, you know, so head, you can't put face props on a Spark. The heads are Delta 1 through 5, which... If we look at what that looks like, just real quick here, they are these. And again, visualizations may be coming in a future update, but that's going to take a lot of work. So I guess that's the general idea of how to customize characters from within the character pool editor screen. Um, generally, whoever you're creating this for, whether it's yourself or a streamer, you'll want to make sure that you're not selecting anything here that they don't have. Or if you do, that you don't use those options. Now to tell if something's being used, you can just come in here and look if it's disabled and checked. Um, that means I'm using Shin's Last Gift currently, so if I go back in here and change it back to a, a Reaper, for example, we go back into the mod screen, you can see that I can now disable this to get rid of those options, but War of the Chosen is now uh, disabled. So it kind of goes goes lo along those lines. Now let's uh, let's show you another little feature here. So if I go into the developers pool, there's like 140 some characters here, and uh, you know they're all typical. I don't think they use any mods or anything like that. No, they don't. But if I was to try to merge them again it'll actually detect every one of these characters is identical to something that's already in the list and just simply not import them. Alright, now let's let's clear all these out. Let's create our new custom character again. I will rename it to Content Creator Shall Sale. Do Male, Caucasian, first selections. Well, I'll change some of these. I'll do Twitchy. Um, I'll do a Sharpshooter. I'm from Egypt, apparently, so I'm going to speak Spanish, because that's what all Egyptians speak, <laughs> naturally. I'll uh, we'll just do test bio here. It automatically generates the date field for you. And we'll go uh, skin color. Well, this is, again, based on the race, so I'll just pick a random one here. Hair color, we're going to go pure white, actually. Yeah, white. And by the way, I could select more hair colors here and then that would update this box to have a ton more stuff however I don't currently have more hair colors mod enabled so I'm not going to do that Let me uncheck that and just select gray eye color eh, we'll keep it green have green eyes scars I have no scars but we're gonna give me a lip slash I have no facial hair but we're gonna give me uh, mutton chops because why not don't know what these faces mean, but I'm going to pick face E. Hat helmet. Let's go with... I obviously have War of the Chosen selected here, which is fine, I suppose. Uh, we'll go with Reaper Hood. Now, that's going to cover up my hair. That's fine. 
Lower face props will do a... Eh, nothing. No face props. But we are going to give ourselves some thick rimmed glasses to look super cool. Now for the body appearance... <laughs> arms don't matter. But I'll pick one. By the way, all these options here, the left arm, right arm, or sorry, the left arm, the forearms, the shoulders, these usually don't unlock unless you're doing like Anarchy's Children and you pick um, an arm here. It's These arms are way more complicated than what gets disabled and enabled. I'm not even going to get into that, but they do get enabled when they should. So if they're not enabled, just don't worry about it. All right, let's give ourselves an armor color of yellow and black, I guess, black-ish. I, I wish these had like, I don't know, the game displays them like that too. Armor pattern, we'll go with blots. Torso, don't care. Legs, don't care. Um, tattoo, don't care, I guess. Oh, see there, I just, now see kids, this is why you put confirmation boxes. <laughs> Maybe I'll put that in the next update. All right, let's just regenerate this. You know what else I need? A randomly generate options button. All right. Instead of talking through all that, I'm just going to randomly pick some stuff. See, kids, this is why you don't be a programmer. Let's do sharpshooter, bio test, skin color, hair color, orange, apparently. Reprood. Cool. Now see, I clicked reset there. Luckily it doesn't do anything because this is a new character. But I gotta work on my uh, trigger finger. There we go. Go hex. Alright, weapon color. Let's make it green. Digital. Alright, so now we have a character. So let's save this pool. Again, you can have any number of characters here. We'll save this pool as... Uh, YT pool. It tells you it worked. Yay. Now let's go into XCOM. And if you say import character, there's the pool. And if I open it, there I am. I can import the entire pool or whatever. And here I am. And as you can see, everything I've selected here is indeed reflected. The armor color is accurate. The Reaper hood is there. I've got the thick rimmed glasses going on. I'm a sharpshooter. Uh, what I'm trying to say is my app works. <laughs> it may not work well, but it works. Uh, so that's that. Now, if I was to merge those developers in, all of a sudden there's 144 characters where uh, I should be in the C's. Yep, content creator there. Let's go ahead and update that pool. YT pool. Then if I go back into XCOM and I import from that pool again, there's the entire character list. So, you can see how that may save you some time if you were trying to consolidate characters. But, I'm trying to think if there's anything I may have missed. That's the gist. Yeah, I think that's the gist. Um, again, updates will come in the future. I say will, that means maybe. <laughs> that means maybe, in programmer speak. There's one more button to talk about here. I mean, yes, I skipped over this one. Let me just reiterate that real quick. It's the same screen, but it's a shortcut to open up a pool without having to go in and then click the merge button. So it detected one of my things as using War of the Chosen, which is obviously uh, this guy. I think. Yeah, because we're using Reaper Hood. So if we get rid of that. Yeah, there we go. Okay, anyway. The only other button here of note is the Customization Templates Browser. 99% of you will never need to click this button, so don't worry about it unless you just want to browse everything my application can do. I will go over what this does though, just for the heck of it. When I was creating this, <laughs> things like how do I know what head should be available in what dropdown was my main question, and that's where templates come into play. 
Basically, templates are just XCOM's way of saying, here's a part, here's what it can do, here's what it's tied to, stuff like that. And not even that. Some of the, A lot of this I had to like customize. But, you can choose, again, it's the same screen, you can choose what DLCs and mods you want to see. Um, and you can kind of, you know, just add everything. You can uncheck whether you want to include vanilla options in here. And then you can filter it. So I want to see all heads. Sorry, head. Part type head. Uh, so here's all the heads. You can see the there's the uh, the race is we got African, Asian, Caucasian, and Hispanic here, and female and male. It goes basically face A through face F. By the way, bonus points because I have localized this display column into eleven different languages. The ones that came with the game, I, I think they are. Chinese simplified, Chinese traditional, we got like Polish, Russian, Korean, Spanish, Italian, Japanese, um, of course English, there's a few others. But yeah, so any of those drop down options, if, if, if it detects your system is in a different language, it should display the correct language. Anyway, um, the display is like what you'll see in the drop down, the name is the name of the template, and then you have other properties of the template here, and where it came from. So if I wanted only to see the heads that are in War of the Chosen, a lot of these are in War of the Chosen are repeated for vanilla, but there they are. Now, alternatively, if I wanted to see, like, I don't know, um, arms that were in, I don't know, what's it called? Anarchy's Children. Then I can just, you know, filter it by that. You can sort, all that stuff. So yeah, this is basically just a template browser that I referenced heavily during development so I could know what does what, and what's tied to what, and how I should filter what. So I don't see why any end user would need this, but I left the button in there just because I could. Alright, what did I miss? Oh yeah, you can do a fancy check for updates and it'll tell you whether one's available or not. And if one is, you can it'll take you to the download page. Okay, I think that sums it up. Uh, hopefully, somebody can get some use out of this and save themselves countless hours of time. If not, hey, it was a fun little project to make, and I will try my best to improve upon it when needed. Let me know what you think.